from Luke chapter 4 in the authorized version of the scriptures. If you happen to have an authorized version, King James Version, please go ahead and grab it and follow me along. Read with me, word for word, verse by verse. Go ahead. That would be a good idea for you to do because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I make mistakes. Yeah. Luke chapter 4. We'll be reading on verse 13. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the capital S Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is God the Father. Okay? The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is Jesus Christ. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. Absolute ridiculousness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world, Moments of time. High mountain. Up on high above everybody. And it says here, shoot unto him the, all the kingdoms in the world of the world in a moment of time. Just boom, like that. How does that happen today? Like we've discussed. How does that happen? That happens like, uh, this is my tablet. You get one of these or your cell phone, right? And you're on YouTube or that uh, disgusting TikTok. And what do you do? S swipe up. Swipe up. Swipe up. You can visit any exotic location. And not even leave the living room. Sitting there in your skivvies. While you're gorging yourself on Cheetos or something like that. Okay? But yeah. Like this. Like this. Just scroll up, scroll up, and Satan, through these devices, can show you the world in a moment of time. And when you get involved in watching these, some of these really stupid, grotesque, vile, te uh, short videos here on YouTube, next thing you know, you've wasted two hours of your life Sitting there in your skivvies, chowing on Cheetos. <laughs> By the way, am I the only one who uses chopsticks when eating those things? <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, that's that's how that's the equivalent of it today. Mm -hmm. What happens when you watch these things? It, it's see, it's a sub, there's a subliminal aspect. When you come across these youthful kids who are perfect in, in complexion and put off onto you what you think you want or what you want to have. And then what happens? Sometimes people get depressed. Well, it's like, wow, my life stinks in comparison to that. Yeah, right? And, and, and there's something that is full of wonder to me. Um, grown men, grown men, wearing makeup as a woman, and personally, uh, I am against anybody wearing makeup. If you're going to paint your face up like a clown or whatever, okay, but what, are you ashamed of what God gave you? Yeah. <laughs> You know, war paint. 
putting it on that of a woman. Well, it heightens their beauty. It's fake. It's fake. We can go off on that for a long time. Because, uh, what was her name? Um, Jezebel. When Jehu rode in to uh, execute uh, what the Lord had wanted done, she looked out the window. She painted her face, it says in the scripture. Then she looked out the window at Jehu and said, Had Zimri peace? Who slew his master? She painted her face, but makeup on. Like I said, we can go off on that for hours. But uh, like I said, there um, I have seen now videos with grown men. Grown men putting on makeup like a woman. And why? For the camera. It, it, that, that, that bothers me. That, that, you know. Some of these guys are also, as I have found out, sodomites. It's like, okay, Doug, number one, you, 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 you're, <laughs> you're in sin with sodomy. Yes, you are. It's Pride Month. But, okay, you're in sin. It's bad enough. Why are you doing that what pertains unto a woman? It's, it's just, it just disgusts me. It really does. And some of these guys are handsome enough as it is. Okay? Some of them are even beautiful to the eye to behold. Yeah. But yet they put on makeup like a woman. It's like, wow, dude, you, you got some problems. You do. But see, what does that point to? Vanity. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. And see... When the devil shows you all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, it's like, well, i got to be something other than I am. Because look at what I see. All these rich, wealthy people and all these people with perfect skin and all this nonsense. It's like, dude, you know, you probably they probably got war paint on. Hmm. Verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now that's truth. Satan is being allowed to be the little g-god of this world for judgment. And then whence we, the body of Christ, be redeemed and taken out of here... He who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way, and then that wicked be revealed. Um, the man of sin, the son of perdition, gets revealed after the body of Christ goes. Okay? And after we out of here, well, you guys are going to have time. <laughs> but there's a catch. There's a catch. See, some of you guys... <laughs> Guys, some of you people who are so vain and you get all these things, you uh, you get money from Jesuit-controlled YouTube. You know, um, what is it called? Mon mo uh, monetize. um, monetized. You got a commercial and in the video where it stops uh, midway when you're, you know, watching something with a commercial, stupid commercial or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and so I don't know how it works, but people will get money from uh, YouTube. And even when Christians uh, are monetized. So, well, what's wrong with that? Um, it's Google is controlled by the Jesuit order. But hey, when you already work for the Jesuit order, right there, bloke, right? So why not monetize your channel? <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. But he gives you all this. But what's the catch? Satan can give you these things of the world. He can give you fame. He can give you glory. He can give you a weekly or monthly check from Google for monetization. I, I think about Robert Breaker, um, who, who boasts, pretty much, boasts that he's monetized. And just like all these Christians, he's not a safe man, I don't think. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> not at all, actually. But, you know... He justifies it. He justifies it. You can justify anything. I've seen it. 
I've seen it. But the payoff is, the catch is, I should say, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. I've seen some of these kids and some of these dudes in these videos we've got like, it, it, it baffles my brain to some of these channels that have like a thousand subscribers uh, naturally ones that they didn't buy okay or some of these channels that have millions of subscribers and they're monetized of course and they probably make quite a bit of money I'm sure that that just it's like I I, I couldn't I, I don't want that myself personally not forbid man I, I, I mean I get intimidated with the number of people who are subscribed to the channel that the Lord gave me. I, I do. I get, I mean, I, that's a little intimidating to me. You know? And there are those out there who scoff at that. It's like, well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be this big thing. I don't want that. Okay? Remember, if Christ's church, Catholics tell you, well, if Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. No, Christ's church is the smallest. Okay? <laughs> you can prove that through scripture. Okay? Gideon. God dwindled, dwindled the whole number down to 300 men. Okay? Israel was chosen, not because he was the biggest, but because he was the smallest. Okay? And Satan, your God, gives you all this stuff. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And what's the defensive measure? I am not worshiping Satan. Satan, number one, you, you really have no clue of what it means to worship. Okay? We all think worship is getting down on your knees, and that is an aspect of it. Yes, it is. There will be a video for you in the description box about this. And there will be. All right? But worship is a lot deeper than that. Because what happens is people start to worship their own idea, their own principles, hence being like your father the devil. Okay? Just because you ain't on your knees going hamana, 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 or whatever like that, does not mean that you are not worshiping your father the devil, people. You, you need to understand what scripture tells you is true worship. Link for you in the description box if you want to watch it. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. It is written. That's how you answer Satan. But check this out. In this, us saints, we run into this all the time. <laughs> it, it's full of wonder when a self-theist starts throwing to you, uh, throwing at you uh, verses of scripture. It's like, do, do you even know what you're quoting? <laughs> do, you, do you? Okay, you want you want, you want to go through that? Let's go through it. And then they back away. Or if they don't, and you explain to them, rightly divided, in context, then they try the circular thing and regurgitate the same argument back at you in a different way. It's like, dude, I'm not even wasting my time with you. Okay, go roll up another one. And verse 9, And he brought him to Jerusalem, city of the great king, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Right up top there, kid. On high! On high. See, put him on a high mountain. And then on a pinnacle of the temple. Put him up on high. Put him up on high. You know, Ken Helvin, those of you who don't know who he is, good. Leave it that way. But Ken Helvin is one of the most pompous, arrogant putzes I've ever seen. And he's a Jesuit. He's lost. He's not saved. But, I mean, the, the bravada, the arrogance that just 
exudes from him. It's, it's just like, wow, dude. Up on high. There are also other of these preachers out there who put on this cloak, this facade of um, humility. But when you hear them talk, and when they do things like, why you should give me your money? <laughs> why you should give me your money? <laughs> uh, is that not debating? Hmm? And Ken Helvin, like I said, he does that all the time. <laughs> it's like, wow. Wow. I, anyway, anyway. But check this out. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence, from hence. Satan says, For it is written, Ah, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now see, Satan is quoting back to God the Father who wrote the scriptures. Uh, Use man's hand, but he's the author. Okay? Quoting to God the Father his own scriptures. But see, what Satan is doing is he's taking it out of context. Which is something the devil and his ministers of righteousness do. All the time. All the time. I can give you example upon example. Uh, one that comes to mind right away. <laughs> um, uh, the Hebraic Jewish people are black. Oh, okay. Um, can you prove that? Song of Solomon. Don't look on me because I'm black. The one person... Uh, uh, Song of Solomon, it's like, uh, that, number one, it's a Gentile. It's not talking about the Hebraic Jewish people. See, when you look at the context of usually what these guys do with their arguments using just one verse and not looking at the context, it's like, dude, dude, what are you doing? You're making a fool of yourself. That's what Satan does. That's what Satan does. Okay? Got to remember that. And you also have to remember, Satan knows this book better than Ruckman thought he did. Oh. He knows this book. <laughs> of course, John MacArthur. I'm not going to That guy's crazy. That guy's crazy. He finally wrote his own Bible, which is Jesuit... Uh, Calvin's brother, Jesuit James White, promotes. Satan knows this book better than any of us. Combined. Because this book, the authorized version of the scripture, tells you the beginning from the end to the end on our existence, our timeline. Okay? And this book prophesies the defeat and the inevitable end of Satan's church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, and him himself. Is it any wonder that when you look into the so-called Bible version issue, it's not an issue, okay, it isn't, okay, there are tons of Bibles. This is the scripture. Anyway, is it any wonder that in the Bible, such as the NIV and stuff like that, that Revelation is the most messed with book that there is? Because it is in the book of Revelation, which foretells the defeat and demise of Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism. So naturally... Satan knows this book better than any of us. But see, the Lord who dwells in the saint, who will guide us into all truth, can spot, usually, when a minister of righteousness, you know, one of Satan's ministers, 
is doing so. But see, most of you guys, if you want to hear anything, you are going to want to hear something that itches your ears, tickles your ears. Verse 12, And Jesus answered, answering, said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Now there are those of you out there who might want to get cute and it's like, well, how you know God can't be tempted to do evil. And you're right, God cannot be tempted to do evil. Then how do you explain this? You look at the temptations that Satan threw at the Lord. Every temptation was aimed at what? Flesh. They were all carnal, fleshly temptations. And we who are saved, saints, we are to walk in the capital S spirit. Because the spirit lusteth against the flesh, and these two are contrary. It's a daily struggle. It's a daily struggle. Go to Ecclesiastes 8. Today is the 8th. Today is the 8th. And um, what the Lord will have done will be done. Ecclesiastes 8, verses 4 on to verse 13. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? You can go ahead and go ahead. Yeah, where the king, King James Version, right? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Ah, time and judgment. Time and judgment. See, mankind lives on a timeline. And God lives outside of that. He can see the beginning from the end. He is not bound as we are to our time. Okay? And judgment. And remember, a wise man. There are two wisdoms. The wisdom that is from above. And the wisdom that is earthly, sensually, sensual, devilish. Okay? And a wise man here in this context is what? Talking about someone who fears the Lord. Because, verse 6, to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. And we discussed, I believe it was in yesterday's video. Or it might have been Wednesday's video. Time. Yeah, that's something we deal with. But see, after you die, time doesn't mean anything. Because once you die, dear friend, you're going to step in eternity. And where are you going to be in that eternity? That's the question. That the, the stupidity of you only live once. You only live once in this sagging sin suit. Yes. 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 But we are eternal beings. That is our spirit and soul. And see, when Satan puts all the kingdoms before your eyes in a moment of time... How easy it is to disassociate. How easy it becomes to justify. Hey, the ends justify the means, right? That's a Jesuit saying. That's the Jesuit motto. Ad majorium the gloria. For the greater glory of God. For he knoweth not that which shall be. Who can tell him when it shall be? There is no man that hath power over the lowercase, that's spirit, to retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death 
And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Yes, yes, death. See, we saints usually don't talk about death in the way because when a saint dies, we know where we're going. We know where we're going. We're going to go to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we as the saint, death to us doesn't really hold that. I mean, the actual going through the motions of dying. Okay, that, that's a different story. Okay, I mean, when you see your death, I mean, when you get the chance to like, you know, on a sinking submarine, or you're in a plane plummeting to the earth, or something like that, or, or you were, God forbid, in one of them towers that fell, and you had only moments, okay, or your heart starts to uh, go nuts on you, or you're in a terminal cancer or whatever, okay, the actual motions of going through that, okay, yeah, you can have some reservation about that. Yeah, yeah. But see, the afterwards, we saints, we know where we're going to go. Okay? We know where we're going to go. Death doesn't frighten a saint like it does all you devils and all you lost people. Every one of these infiltrating Jesuit coadjutor pond scum devils are afraid of death. And they'd be both, well, I'm not afraid of it. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, yes, you are. Because you know where you're going to go. You know where you're going to go. There are those out there who knowingly are serving the Vatican. Knowingly serving the Vatican, Rome. And there isn't an ignorance in them because when they get to that certain level, there has to be at least a working knowledge of the truth for in order for them to deviate so far from it. You can only be ignorant so long if you really want truth until the Lord gets a hold of you. Okay? All right? Then again, it is up to you to make the right decision. Okay? And right here it says, Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. See, you youngsters out there, you're all about your youth. You're all about grown men putting on makeup. What's wrong with you? Okay, you're, you, you, you sodomite, you're, you're, you got, you're in trouble with the Lord, okay? But, okay, why, why, why you got to put on makeup? Well, I don't get that. I don't get that. That's disgusting. Grown man putting on makeup. That's disgusting. That is, I mean, it's bad enough when a woman puts on makeup, okay? I, I'm totally against, yes, I am. I am totally against people wearing makeup. I am. Uh, we, like I said, we can go off on that for hours, but we're not going to. But again, you know, a grown man putting on makeup. <laughs> Whatever. But see, the vanity of trying to cling to something that you can't control. And Satan tells you, you can control it. There are technologies to where you... And even that, uh, that, that guy, uh, DeGracie, Neil DeGracie, Tyson Neil De, whatever his name is, it's like, oh yeah, we can, uh, we can live forever. He's right to an extent because our spirit and soul will live forever. Yes. Either in heaven or in hell. But see, what he's going off of is this. Your body. Hey, brother. You want to spend eternity in that? Come on, brother Jeff. Come on, brother Alexander. <laughs> all you brethren <laughs> you sisters do you want to spend eternity in this in this and the, the, the remarkable thing is that there are people out there who do want to spend eternity in this but see verse 8 also tells us that the vanity of trying to maintain something that you have no control over. You have, you have time in your life. What are you going to do with that time? And see, this kind of topic comes from someone who has been in that
been there. Okay, I was once young. Now I'm old. There are, you know, the 68 models. You're older than I am, but only by six years. Love you guys. But, you know, we were once there too. We were once lost like you. And instead of trying to coerce people into why you should give to this ministry or whatnot, I'm warning you of the vanity of what you hold so dear is what we saints ought to be doing to you kids. You're going to die. There's no discharge in that war. You have no power in the day of death. When it's your time, it's your time. All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city, where they had so done. This is also vanity. <laughs> <clears throat> and what's the thing? Where's your God, huh? Where's your God? Why is he allowing these things to go on? Why is God allow suffering? Free will. Free will. Now, you want to expound on that? Link in the description box. But brethren, whenever you run across, well, why, why is God allow suffering? Free will. And leave it at that. If they want more, then give it to them if they want it. And, always, and brethren, like I told you, get in the habit of making sure. It's like, you want to hear this? And then you ta always have your sword on you. It's like, okay, you want, let's talk about this. You want to talk about it? I, we, can, we can go through it. Okay? You want to know? You really want to know? Or are you in this kind of pedophogging romance with your own principles? Aha! Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is, full of, is fully set in them to do evil. I got time. So I can live my life as a devil while all the while pretending to be someone who's saved and on my deathbed. <laughs> Always, you kill me, buddy. <laughs> You're not my buddy. <laughs> but you kill me. You think these guys live like the devil, serving the Vatican, and then on their deathbed because they know the truth. They know the truth. They think that they're going to get into heaven on their deathbed. <laughs> there are people out there like that. <laughs> It's insane. It's insane. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. But the all likelihood, the probability of that actually happening, ah, uh, the odds are very stacked against you. The way you got. Even Tyson, the one dude, the, the brilliant guy, astrophysicist or whatever he is, he's like, well, I see all this suffering, and how can a loving God, <laughs> number one, Mr. Tyson thinks he's better than God, Okay, and number two, he's been led on by the lie given to him by Rome that God loves you unconditionally. We addressed this yesterday, okay? See, you people have been affected, infected by Rome, and you don't even know it. Because most of you, most, not all, not all, not all hardly. But most of you, the majority of you, when it comes to something of Jesus Christ, in one form or another, you're going to gravitate to what Rome has made known. Verse 12. 
Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, either the Lord is giving you grace to repent or giving you more rope to hang yourself. Either or are applicable. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God which fear before him. How are you supposed to love someone you're afraid of? <laughs> and, you know, uh, love or fear. Love or fear. You don't know what love is. How many of you, and I say this myself, not having a father growing up, but those of you who had had fathers who disciplined you or beat the snot at you, you loved your father, but you were afraid of him, weren't you? Weren't you? And unfortunately, the way things are with this disgusting woke thing, too, and it being in its height here in America, um, the idea that a man is not needful in the family structure. I was raised by my mother. There are several of you that were raised by your mother. Okay? In and of itself, okay, a father should have been there, yes. Yes! But sometimes you don't always have that option. Sometimes the father has been taken out of the equation by means of death. Okay? But then when you come to the father, you know that when you come to him his way and he saves you and seals you, God's love is, is for you. Okay? Why? Because he cannot deny himself. And see, when you are a saint, a saved individual, sealed until the day of redemption, then that unconditional love is there. Okay? That doesn't mean that you can do some that you'll do something that the Lord doesn't hate or something like that. Okay? God hates sin. But see, when the Lord saves you, when you go the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saves you and seals you, you belong to him. You are part of the purchased possession. He cannot deny himself. Hence, his love for you is unconditional. But guess what? You as a saint, we as saints, can do things he hates. Okay? All right. See, that, that's the glory and that's the, the mercy of this dispensation with eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Which so many try to offer you a part missing ingredients such as brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord. But they put the emphasis on you. All oh, this will I give you. If you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. See, the faith that was once delivered on to the saints, the way is totally contrary to this. And as many of you have figured out, most religion is uplifting to this. Flesh, carnal. Verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Why? Because he feareth not before God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Proverbs 8. Now let's get to the meat of this. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? And unto man he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. She, fear of the Lord, and departing from evil, are like I'll talk to you this week about. That these are given to you in the context of a woman whose beauty is 
unimaginable to our carnal eyes. It's that precious. And it's beyond anything that Satan, who will show you the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, nothing, nothing that Satan can offer you with all the glamour, the glitz, and the face paint, and all the beauty of this world. Nothing can compare unto the fear of the Lord. Nothing. She standeth in the top of the high places. By the way in the places of the paths. There are many paths, say, Satan tells you. There is only one way to God. There's only one way. You don't like that. Because that one way hurts. She crieth at the gates before you enter in. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. You know the proverbial saying, the best place to put a lemonade stand is at the gates of hell? I'm not sure I agree with that statement, but whatever. On to you, O men. Do I call? And my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools who say in the heart there is no God, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of Excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. The ends thereof are death. Every way is uh, right in the uh, every way is right in the uh, eyes of man, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. I just bradized that. See, you and I, by ourselves, we can't really know what is right. We can't. We think we can. We can get close to it. But at the end of the day, you'll do something to justify yourself contrary to the truth. Deck the halls, buddy. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth. And right to them that find knowledge. Now look at that verse. Look at the context that we have so far. Doth not wisdom, the fear of the Lord, Cry, and understanding put forth her voice. Look at verse 9. They are all plain to him that understandeth, departing from evil, and write to them that find knowledge. Knowledge is the result of wisdom. Okay? Wisdom is not the result of knowledge. Wisdom is first, then knowledge. And what wisdom is in you? Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. And Satan, you read about in Ezekiel 28, was adorned with every precious stone, not every, but all precious stones and gold and his tablets are like beautiful, ah, voice, he's smooth, darker. Good at linguistics. Yeah. And see, what we read in Luke chapter 4, Satan in his beauty, and you got to remember, Lucifer, Satan, that old serpent, the devil. When you see him, we're all going to see what Satan looks like eventually. 
Um, he will be, he will be the most gorgeous looking male, man, whatever we could ever possibly imagine. Beautiful. The anointed cherub that covereth. Satan is beautiful. He is. Doesn't sin look beautiful to you? Think about that. Sin is so beautiful unto a lot of you to the fact that you would rather have the beauty of sin than the ugliness of truth, right? Oh, and that, 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 that just, uh, that right there, uh, Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53. See, Satan comes along transformed as an angel of light, which you crazy Pentecostals, who claim to see the Lord, that's what you've seen. A devil, if not the devil himself. I doubt you've seen the devil himself. He's busy at Rome. But, see, truth at first is supposed to hurt you. Isaiah 53, verses 1 and 2. Uh, verses 1 and verse 3. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form no, nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And see what you people. Satan, who is transformed as an angel of light, with his ministers who are also transformed as the ministers of righteousness, comes along looking so beautiful, offering those things to you, these sins, in a beautiful form. And when you got something, well, hey, guess what? How beautiful, how beautiful is it to your ego, to your pride? When you got some putts coming along telling you, you just, just simply believe. And you'll go to heaven. Don't worry about brokenness. That's, that's, that's work. Don't worry about contrition. Oh, we're all sin. Calling about, upon the name of the Lord, that's for the Old Testament, for the Jews only. You're stupid. I, I'm sorry. I can't be kind about that. You're stupid. And fearing him? How are you supposed to fear someone you love? Right? And see, that's all contrary to truth. But see, you gobble that up like nothing, boy. He is despised and rejected of men, men of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And see, unto us saints, the Lord is precious. Back to uh, Proverbs 8. Back to Proverbs 8. For wisdom, verse 11, for wisdom is better than ruby. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. The fear of the Lord is beyond comparison to all the kingdoms of the world that Satan <laughs> that Satan flashes before your face in a moment of time, dear friend. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And look what's, look what's listed first. Pride. Hey, it's Pride Month, isn't it? Pride. God hates pride. God hates it. Pride is what got Satan booted, as it were. He was taken with his own beauty, like virtually all you lost people. And see, you twist it sometimes in your dejection of self, you uplift yourself. 
Pride is the first thing that is mentioned. And you know what? I have a pride problem myself. Praise the Lord, though. He keeps me in line. Praise the Lord. Fear the Lord is to hate evil. Pride. And arrogancy. And the evil way. The evil way. Jesus Christ, he is the way. The evil way. Anything that anything that's contrary to this, rightly divided, is evil. All your little man-made, Jesuit-made, uh, Satan-made religions, they're evil. And I hope I offend some of you by saying that. And that includes Christianity. And the froward mouth do I hate? Froward mouth do I hate? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. And see in context this was written under the law. Israel was God's representative in the Old Testament under the law. And God wanted his his people who he chose. Okay? And yes, God chooses rulers today. Most of the times nowadays for judgment because there isn't a godly ruler on this earth. I doubt I doubt there I don't think there's one at all. I don't think there's one at all. And the way the world is today, I don't think a godly man would be in a position of authority in that word, like they were a dictator today or a president or whatnot, because of the way the world is and how close we are to the redemption of the purchased possession. People like evil more than good. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Early in the morning or as soon as soon as possible. But see, mostly time most of the times you people will hear another Jesus and another gospel. Which it's like that don't make sense. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches. And righteousness. Durable riches. And righteousness. The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. There are you, the mercy of man could, is fleeting. Dependent on situation. The mercy, mercy of the Lord endureth. Whereas man's mercy is fleeting. You can get mercy from a man, from mankind. But something could happen where that mercy will be retracted. A saint, someone who is saved, his mercy endureth forever. Enduring mercy. I think a majority of you have no true concept of mercy. You see mercy for only what you see with your carnal eyes and not intuiting into the matter the eternal perspective. The mercy that you get from your God, Satan, is fleeting. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. We could, that could, it, that's, a, that's another topic for a video in and of itself. Okay? My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. The fear of the Lord, right there. The fear of the Lord is better than gold, rubies, choice silver, fine gold. But so many of you believe the lie when Satan passes the world before your eyes in a moment of time and he gives you the riches of this world trying to comprehend or uh, trying to compensate or compete with the eternal riches our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. 
I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance that endures, and I will fill their treasures. But, but what happens? But what happens? You get the call, you get, you know, you hear the truth, but what happens? Go to Proverbs chapter 1, verses 24 under 33. You, you shall be as gods, remember. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded it. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof, you don't want to hear it. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. God mocking you for your fear when you openly rejected him. You got to remember, dear friend, never forget this. Never trust a Christian who comes to you and tells you God loves you. Run from such an individual. They are giving you another Jesus and another gospel. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Why? And see, they come to the Lord, you come to the Lord in a moment of time like that with this fleeting mentality. Get me out of this. Okay, you get me out of this, but I'm going to continue on living according to my own standard. And see, the Lord knows that about you. The Lord knows that about you. Okay? The Lord is merciful. Yes, the Lord would rather, much rather be merciful and have you saved. Yes. But see, the Lord does know your heart. Yes, he does. And he knows that your heart is wicked, desperately wicked. Okay? And remember, Scripture tells us, if you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. And a fool says in his heart there is no God. Okay? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord is wisdom. Now you might be cute saying, hey Brad, knowledge comes before wisdom. Uh, look at the verse. For that they hated knowledge, comma, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Though it's worded like that, it's still showing you that the fear of the Lord is the produ pr uh, product, is uh, produces knowledge, excuse me. And note how it says, choose. Choose. There are those out there who tell you that the decision has been made for you. That your faith itself isn't even yours. Run from these people who tell you that. They are liars, they are deceivers, and they're damning people to hell with their Calvinistic heretical doctrine. And they sidestep the issue by focusing on little things rather than the big, They strain at a gnat and they'll have you swallow the camel. And that includes its dung too, by the way. They were none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Big part. Back to Proverbs 8. Picking up at verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old, 
I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. Hold your place here. Go to Genesis chapter 1. Come on. Go there. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 and on to 3. In the beginning, God. Created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capitalist spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. In the beginning God, Father. And the spirit of God, self-explanatory. Now there are those out there who talk about this absolutely ridiculous gap theory that in verse 2 accounts for millions and millions and trillions of years. Uh, Shepherd's Chapel are a bunch of heretics who teach the gap theory. And you hear Christians talking about how, yeah, well, the earth is actually millions of billions of years old. And they go to here and they produce the gap theory. That's a lie. It's stupid. And within the gap theory that this is the second earth, whatever, whatever. It, it's just stupid. Don't believe it. And God, verse 3, said, spoke, let there be light. It was light. This, dear friend, is the Godhead. See, Rome has poisoned you in thinking that one God is comprised of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. And Rome, from, from its inception, and you can prove this yourself, look it up. From the inception of the Roman Catholic Church, their number one doctrine that they started to produce was what? One God and three persons. The heretical, satanic, Trinity. Okay? And, and hey, Trinity will be on the earth. It's the beast, um, the false prophet, and the dragon, or something like that. I got that mixed up. But it's Satan. Satan. Okay? The Trinity is satanic. The Godhead is right there for you in the first three verses of Scripture. God the Father the Spirit of God, and God said. God said. What, what does that mean? Go to John chapter 1. Okay, go to John chapter 1. God said. God spoke. John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning was the capital W word. Capital W word appears seven times in Scripture. Six times in the Bible. Go figure that one out. Because they take out 1 John chapter 5. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Verse 7 in 1 John chapter 5. They take that out. Anyway. In the beginning was the word, capital W. And the word, capital W, was with God. And the word, capital W, was God. Not past tense. The word is God. Okay? One God, spirit, soul, and body. All things were made by him. God said. God said. God spoke it into existence. Okay? And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Look at verse 14. And the capital W word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Devils and heretics out there liked it to read this way. And the flesh was made the word. I, 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 I did, to prove a point. 
<laughs> that's that's how a lot of devils uh, want that to read. They why? Because every the devil's all about flesh. The devil is all about the sagging sensu. Okay, that's all they're about. That's all they're about. And you who are of your father, the devil, that's all you're about. Prove me wrong. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory is of, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And see, and then you run into these, well, you know, the God of the Old Testament, God of the Old Testament. God, the old, Hebrews chapter 13, one verse. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, talking about wisdom, right? Fear the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, hmm. verses 23 under verse 25. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks, Greeks or Gentiles, foolishness. But unto them which are called. Now this is not Calvinism. God calls you the way of the cross. God elected. God chose the cross. Okay? God is a God who chooses. He chose the cross. When you go the way of the cross, the way you need to go, that he may save you. And he saves you. You are of the called. Because you went the called way of the cross. Okay? That's what that means. Beware of Calvinism. Which is very good sounding to the flesh. Very good sounding to the flesh. Why? Because with Calvinism. I'm elect. You're not. You're a reprobate. You can't be saved. I am elect. It leads to pride. Calvinism in the end result, in every incident, results in pride. Period. That's all you need to know. Look at John MacArthur. If you don't know who he is, you, most of you probably do, but if you don't, good. Keep it that way. You don't want to know about that guy. Paul Washer, watch out for that guy. Calvinist. Jesuit James White, who the beloved David Daniels called his brother. You can prove that in one of his videos unless he's taken it down. He refers to James White as his brother. And when confronted on that, David Daniels said in email form that there was no proof, written proof, that James White was a Jesuit. And he's a man who ought to know better than to say a stupid statement like that. <laughs> but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, remember, Greeks are Gentiles. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Uh-oh. John, when the Lord was behind him on the Isle of Patmos, he fell down at the face at, uh, in front of the Lord Jesus as if he were dead. He was terrified. But yet, Christianity, especially these idiots with this disgusting God loves you garbage, give you this impression that Jesus is this soft, plushy little teddy bear that when you get up there, you're going to give him a bro hug. And the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And 
Unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. It's Jesus Christ that you're going to give an account to. You're, like I told you this entire week, your belief on that, if you want to believe that or not, is irrelevant. That's what's going to happen. You're going to fear him then. I promise you that. So, Jesus Christ, who is our hope, He's the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God, foolishness of God, who calls what God does is foolish? Come on, that, that, that's a, that's a no-brain. You self-theists. Religionists at least put on a facade for a moment. But then again, when you start scratching at it, 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 it's like with the fake gold that you get from China, when you blowtorch it, it becomes, it's, it's like silver or something like that. Not even real silver, okay? <laughs> I've been watching that, that uh, China Insider um, uh, rabbit trail here where he's got these videos, uh, China fakes everything. Anyway, anyway. But who thinks, who refers to what God is and does as foolish? Tyson, Neil, De, Neil Tyson de Gracie, Aaron Ra, and all these other self-theists, evolutionists, <laughs> astrophysicists. Yea, hath God said. Christians. Christians especially. But the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. I've recently been doing something that I don't normally do. I've been commenting on videos. They're vain. It's vain. Uh, you know, I don't get involved in arguments. I, 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 but I usually don't comment on videos because it's vain. But I've been commenting on some videos. I don't watch Christians, by the way. I don't. I don't watch Christians on YouTube unless a brother or a sister is like, hey, Brad, check this out. Or, yeah, or people send me a link to something. And um, uh, thankfully, this hasn't happened for a while now, thankfully. But some were sending me videos of a certain guy from out north, uh, northwest, no, northeast, excuse me. And instantly it's like, huh, I don't want to watch that guy. I don't want to even hear his voice. And some of you know who I'm talking about. Thankfully, people are, have stopped sending me things from that guy. I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see him. I, go away. Okay? But I don't watch Christians. I don't. Like I said, unless a brother is like, hey, Brad, check, check this out. Or a sister, hey, Brad, can you watch this? And so, then I see what it is. <sighs> okay, fine. Because Christians just wear me out, man. They do. They do. And when I would say Christians, I'm referring to these people who attempt to teach things. There are those who call themselves Christians and are just entertainers, like that older gentleman with the hot dog on his hat. He calls himself a Christian, but that guy gets himself in trouble when he starts talking about things that he doesn't even know about. He doesn't even know nothing. Okay? You need to shut up, dear man, if you're watching me. You need to shut your mouth. But anyway, I don't watch Christians. But I have been watching, you know, looking at videos, and I've been commenting on videos lately. I have. Like I said, I don't normally do that because it's vanity of vanity, said the preacher. And, um, you know, <laughs> sometimes I get blocked. <laughs> um, sometimes I don't. Rarely get responses. People uh, respond to me as like, you know, thinking in the Christian mindset, and you know, I, and it's weird too because a lot of channels, when you go to put a link in the comment section, the lovely Jesuit created satanic algorithm uh, will not allow that comment to come through. It will be like if you look on your own algorithm thing, or that YouTube studio, there's that whole list of unpublished comments, waiting for whatever. And the other day I did that. I was like, whoa! 
Whoa! I was like, wow, dude! <laughs> and then, you see, that's pretty, praise the Lord. I, I'm glad. I'm glad um, that the things the Lord has given me chafe a lot of you. I, I am. I am. I'm glad of that. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I, I rejoice in that. I rejoice in that. Okay? Anyway, anyway, like I said, I've been commenting on videos lately. And hopefully, and see, what happens is when, like, someone comments on one of the videos that the Lord gives me to do, or I get a new, or excuse me, or someone, someone subscribes to the channel, I'm going to check, and if, uh, and you only know about that if the dude or dudess has their subscription thing public or whatever, like that uh, Amy individual who, who subscribes, unsubscribes, subscribes, un back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> God bless you, buddy. God bless you, buddy. Seriously, God bless you. But anyway, I'm going to check you out. That's what I do. That's what I do. I, I'll click on the list like, who are you? And I'll, I'll check out your channel. I'll check out who you are. Doesn't, of course, it's not always an accurate reflection because a lot of people are mighty behind a keyboard and face-to-face uh, -face thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. See, if you were to meet me in real life, the person that you're seeing here and talking to is the exact same person you're going to meet out there. I think 90% of the people, especially on YouTube and within the comment sections, I bet you if you were to meet these people in person that they would be totally opposite of the brave knowledge that they purport to show you in the comment section. Now, there are those out there who are, you know, what you see, what you get in the comment section. And some are very worse. Don't get me wrong. And with the comments, too, you don't even know if that's an actual person, spirit, soul, and body, or one of these AI things. You really don't know. You could be, and there's evidence to support this, you could be in a comment section having a dialogue with a robot. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Hmm? Yeah, isn't that something? But see, I, I, I'll check you out. I'll go, I'll go and see what you're, you're about and check out your subscriptions or see what you say about yourself. I do that. And the hope is that because, um, you know, you, you drop verses of scripture, absolutely. Um, <laughs> they don't usually stay up long. Uh, they usually don't. They, they usually take those down. And when I've done that, uh, those are the channels that I usually get blocked on. <laughs> Whatever. But the hope is that one of these guys will like, who is this? They click on the channel and come to the channel and they see something. You know? And some of them do. Some of them do. But they're too scared to continue on. Anyway, pardon you, pardon for that little rabbit trail. Let's go back to Proverbs 8. Where let's refresh ourselves. Okay? Verses 22 and 23 again. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Verse 24, let's continue. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Well, as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the, to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now you got to remember, Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? He is God the Father. 
All right? He is the Word made flesh. Okay? you got to remember that. Go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Oh, but, but before we go to John 17, go to John 14. Go to John 14. Verses 6 on verse 9. No, 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 no. Verses 4 on verse 9. And whither I go, ye know, ye know, and the way ye know. That was Jesus talking. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. The way. Only one way. Exclusive. And the life. Excuse me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the only way. All of your other ways are false. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. See, you can't see my soul or my spirit, but you're looking at my sagging sin suit. Okay? Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Shew us the Father? Jesus is the Father. Okay? Jesus is the He just said he was. Okay? None of this nonsensical Trinity baloney, belodness. Okay? None of that. Jesus is the Father. John 17 Verses 1 on to verse 5 to start. Then, by the way, Christian, you people, this is the Lord's Prayer. John 17. This is the Lord's Prayer. Okay? The, you know, our Father, that's a prayer for Jews. This is the Lord's Prayer. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. We just we read in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God, the Spirit of God, and God said, there's the Godhead, not three persons, but the Godhead, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, okay? The fullness of the Godhead bodily is our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are made in the image of God. God has a spirit. God has a soul. God has a body. Unlike God, the spirit, soul, and body can be separate. We can't do that. God can. Okay? Now, skip a little bit to verses 24 on to the close. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith Thou hast loved me, may be in them, and I in them. 
And the Holy Ghost is that spirit. The, the, the Godhead is not that difficult to understand. The reason why a lot of you have a difficulty understanding it, because you have been influenced by Rome and you don't even know it. Because Rome tells you God is three persons. And the self and the Muslim and others look at that, one plus one plus one equals three. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, you know, I, I'm not, I don't even have a good enough diploma, but I'm, me and myself is like, oh, yeah, yeah, what, 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 hello? Hello, what, what, I mean, simple, one plus one plus one equals three. How does that work? It doesn't. It doesn't. Simple. Okay? And Psalm 90, Psalm 90, Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God of the Old Testament is God of the New Testament. One God comprised the spirit, soul, and body. This ain't that difficult at all. Like I said, so many of you have unconsciously, unknowingly, and some of you, good, good for you, unwittingly have been influenced by Rome. Verse 32 in Proverbs 8. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and findeth and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Is the way, the truth, and the life? But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You love death. The wages of sin is death. You love your sin. You love your sin. Isaiah 28. Then we'll be done. It's just a short one today. Isaiah 28. 14 on the 20. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And the wages of sin is death. And you watch your sin. And with, the, with hell are we at agreement. If you fall down and worship him, all will be thine, including hell. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Oh, the shock that some of you are going to get. And see, by the time that shock hits you, like when you're standing in front of the one that you've rejected all your life, it's too late. But you can lead the horse to water, and even if you smack him upside the head with a, I'm going to get this whole wrong, um, switch, not a twitch, a switch. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion. For a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, 
a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the, lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding places. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Meaning, your little false religions, your little evolutionism, your little easy believism, whatever, your Taoism, your Shintoism, your Buddhism, all your isms, they ain't going to hold up to the truth. Because you've made lies your uh, refuge. You're at agreement with hell. You're of your father the devil, dear friend. From, that, from the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. Who has believed our report? And when you've made lies your refuge your entire life, all the while knowing what is real and truth, and you think on your deathbed you're going to recant and go to heaven. You know, you ought to be smoking what Dade's smoking, man. Probably do you better than anything. For the bed is shorter than, than that a man can stretch himself on it. And the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. The fake you can't cover yourself with all the way. You, you, you need to understand. I know a lot of you, I've, I've encountered this. It's like, well, I don't believe in hell. Good, good for you. Good for you. Good for you. You will. Yes, you, are, you Christians always say that. I'm not a Christian. Shut up. <laughs> I said that to the one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like that. I'm not a Christian. Shut up. Or no, I said, shut your mouth. That's why I said it. Shut, shut your mouth. I'm not a Christian. Mark chapter 9. Hey, you want, you know, you, you, with hell you're at agreement? This is what awaits you. This is what awaits you. Mark chapter 9, verses 43, on to verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Again, our Lord is not saying for you literally to mutilate yourself. Where are your hands touching? What are your hands touching? What are you watching? Huh? What are you, what are the world passing before your eyes in a moment of time? Huh? What are you touching? Huh? You're looking at them uh, pornographic flicks, huh? You're touching another man's wife? You touching another woman's husband? You touching illicit drugs, huh? Are you a man touching another man? Hey, it's fried once, right? And I already showed you that one thing that God hates is pride. One of the things that God hates vehemently is pride. It's pride month. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Eternal. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. As we talked about yesterday with the Proverbs 7 thing. With her words she forced him. With her, uh, let's instead of me trying to 
butcher that by memory. <laughs> Look at that in Proverbs 7 again. Okay, Proverbs 7. <clears throat> uh, where is that? Uh, verse 13. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vo vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Cinnamon. All flesh related. Hmm. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. One of only two times loves appears in Scripture. For the good man is not at home. He is on, he has gone a long journey. No one's going to know. A little doesn't hurt. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. You got time. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. And with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway. Where are your feet taking you? Huh? Where are your feet leading you? What path are your feet walking? He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is, that it is for his life. Back to Mark chapter 9. Verse 46. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. I believe worm there is talking about your soul. Does that mean that our soul is worm shaped? I don't think so, but regardless, what this is talking about is when you're in hell, Andy, you idiot, um, it's eternal. You're not getting out of hell. Oh, you, you'll, you'll get a moment at the great white throne inevitably to be cast into the lake of fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Three times, and the Bibles take out two of those appearances, by the way. Three times you are told by the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. What are you looking at? I'm looking at you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I haven't figured out, I mean, besides putting like, you know, something like this on it uh, to, you know, whatever. Uh, go to Psalm, I believe that's, I always get this wrong at the first. Psalm 101. Versus, well, let's, read, let's read this whole thing. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come? O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. No, wait, was it? I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. There are things I can't unsee. There are things I can't unhear. It cleaves to you. Like I've said to you many times, I can recite ACDC that I heard when I was a child, meaning early teens. I can remember movies. I can't unsee them. They cleave to you. 
what are you putting before your eyes? And see, that's how Satan works. He, he shows you all the kingdoms. Of, he shows you all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And you get these images, these, vis these visions in your head of these fake people with their makeup and oh they look so pretty and in these exotic places while you're sitting on your couch using your chopsticks to eat Cheetos. Am I the only one who does that by the way? Yeah I'll eat Cheetos if they're there okay but you know yeah I, I use chopsticks I don't get my hand in there but anyway again what are you putting before your eyes? Our Lord is saying, put that away. It's better to be the oddball to, than to join yourself to the number of that and go to hell. If froward heart shall depart from me, I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. You know, there are people out there, you know, like I said, I, I, I usually, I usually don't comment on videos. I don't. I usually don't. You know, I mean, I rarely, I mean, I had rarely commented on Brethren's videos. But recently, like I said, um, you know, when I see some of these things, um, I'll, I'll comment on them. It's like, kid, what's wrong with you? And stuff like that. I wouldn't, I'm, you know... Not being, I'm not being contentious like that, but, you know, and like I said, when someone comments or someone subscribes and I know about it, I'm going to go see who you are. I'm going to go to your so-called channel and see what's going on. That's, you know, um, I wrongly assume that others do that. Then again, when you get some, I, I can't, I can't fathom that, dude. I can't, I can't fathom having a thousand subscribers. I don't want a thousand subscribers, by the way. I don't. Okay, like I told you, I get intimidated with the ones that the Lord has given. Okay, I do. That is like, you know, that's why it was great when YouTube allowed you to hide the number of subscribers. That was great. Because, you know, people judge things about that number. It's like, well, you know, you only got how many, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, so? You got over a million. What's the point? You're popular? Yeah, yeah. So is Satan. Well, it's the work of the Lord that you get so big, right? Look, look, look at these Christians who got these big channels. Look at them. Look at what they're begging for. Look at how they conduct themselves. What you can see, of course. Look at them. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for uh, enduring me for this time that you have, if you have. Thank you. Hope you consider these things. Come, let's let's reason together, you and I. And incidentally, in the one video, and I'm con contemplating uh, putting a disclaimer in that video. In the video, let us reason together. I make mention of a certain individual who I want nothing to do with, and I can't recommend anymore. At that time, that video, Let Us Reason Together, was done about three years ago. At that time, I was not aware of certain indiscrepancies with a certain individual that I name in that video. 
and I repent of that. So, <laughs> so, like I said, I was thinking about putting a disclaimer in that video. Uh, was rec it was kind of suggested, it's like, hey, why don't you do another one? It's not up to me. But anyway, anyway, thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for one another. Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video.